I've been a Turo host for a long time. This year is my eighth year as a host, and over the course of the last few years, I've grown my fleet from one car to almost 30. And as you can probably guess, over the years of operating my fleet, I've learned a ton of tips, tricks, and best practices. And every year or so, I like to make a video where I break down some of my best tips and tricks, that way if you aren't aware of these, you can become aware. And oftentimes, these tips and tricks aren't enough to make an individual video about them. So let's get started. Now, if you feel as though this video is helpful, but you want something a bit more in depth, then I encourage you to check out my course, The Car Sharing Masterclass. This is a course where I teach you how to start and scale a car sharing fleet with the same business model that I use. In the course, we teach you everything you need to know. There's also a private Discord and monthly Zoom calls included. And the best part is, is that the course is constantly being updated with new content and resources every single month, and you will always gain access to that as a course member. If you're interested in checking that out, there's a link to it down in the description below. First is the topic of reviews. Reviews on Turo or really anything hospitality related are going to be so incredibly important. When it comes to getting good reviews, one of the best things that you can do is ask for them. And at the end of every single reservation, I have an automated message that goes out telling a guest, hey, if you had a five-star experience, please leave a review. If you have any feedback, please send us a private message. This has resulted in a 5.0 overall rating for my profile, and many guests do exactly what I suggest. They leave a five-star review, and if they do have any constructive or negative feedback, a lot of guests just end up messaging us directly rather than leaving a public review, which is exactly what you want. But of course, like with any business, negative reviews are inevitable, so if you do get a negative review, I also have tips and tricks on how to handle that as well. The first is to stay on top of those. I hate dealing with reviews. In fact, dealing with a business in general, reviews and commentary is definitely my least favorite aspect of it. It gives me a ton of anxiety, and as a result, I make it a point to only look at our tour reviews once per week. Because while most of the reviews that we get on Turo are very positive, whenever I do see a negative review, it very literally ruins my day. The good news is, is that with Turo, if you do have a negative review that you can prove was retaliatory to something that you did, you can actually get that review removed. And I encourage you to stay on top of this aggressively. The best way to make sure that you have the highest likelihood of getting any negative review removed is to make sure that there's a paper trail. Only communicate with guests in the app, document everything, take photos, and make sure that if you do have a negative review, you follow up with support. If support pushes back, you should escalate it. In order to get a negative review taken down on a retaliatory basis, all you have to do is contact support via chat, let them know what happened, provide the evidence as to why you think it was retaliatory, and typically they can get it removed within a couple of minutes. For every 10 one-star reviews I get, I get 9 taken down. And across my entire fleet, so hundreds of trips per month, I probably get one one-star review per month, and so nine out of ten months, I'm going to be able to get that review taken down. And while one one-star review per month may not seem like a lot, it actually can have a real negative effect on your profile and your ability to get more bookings. On that same note, if you do come across a guest that leaves you a negative review and you aren't able to get that negative review taken down, then be sure to be very strategic with how you respond. I sometimes see hosts who respond to every single negative thing a guest has to say about their car, and I think that this is really walking a fine line, and if that line is crossed, it really isn't a good look. You know, the reality is, no matter how good you operate your fleet, mistakes happen, and sometimes people, even the best operators, drop the ball. But you know, whenever the type of situation occurs, it's important to just apologize, own up to it, and move on, rather than come up with a dozen different reasons as to why that issue wasn't your fault. Even if, technically speaking, it probably wasn't. I know as a consumer, I wouldn't want to rent from a host that had a million different excuses as to why something happened during a guest trip, but I absolutely would rent from a host who owned up to a mistake mistake, apologize, and promise that they would fix the issue. And so I would be very cognizant about how often and what you're saying in these public review responses. It's important to address negative reviews, but you want to do so in a classy, professional, and strategic way because not doing so could hinder your ability to get more guests. One final note on the topic of reviews is reimbursements. For many of the reimbursements for Turo, you have 24 hours to produce evidence for the reimbursement, so you need to take your photo during a period of time. But then you have 72 hours to actually request for the reimbursement. And whenever it comes to the topic of retaliatory reviews, in order to prove that a review is retaliatory, the guest actually has to make a comment with that review. 
getting your views removed that are just a star with no commentary, it is very, very difficult to get that removed from your profile. The guest would have to say something like, this host charged me $150 for smoking, or the rental was terrible because they charged me a $10 convenience fee. It obviously doesn't have to be quite as direct as that, but there needs to be some context as to why the guest reviewed you that and how it was linked to whatever it is that was retaliatory. Evidence for a retaliatory review can also be in the form of messages, so it doesn't have to be in the form of a public review, but you do need to have some sort of evidence there proving that it was in fact retaliatory by nature. Because of this, even though we can get retaliatory reviews taken down, you still want to be strategic with how you request for reimbursements because reimbursement requests can end up leaving a bad taste in guests' mouth and you don't want them to leave you a poor review with no commentary as a result of a reimbursement request because in this case, you probably won't be able to get it taken down. So my strategy with this is that I always try to get my guests to review first. I of course do this by asking my guests to review me, but I also make sure that I don't submit any reimbursement requests before the guest has reviewed me, or at least I try my best not to. And I do this by setting calendar reminders. This is a very simple solution, but I just plug in my phone the car I need to request for and when and my phone reminds me. This way I wait the full 72 hours before I request reimbursement, I end up giving my guests three more days to review me and I try to avoid that retaliatory review that could result from a reimbursement. And by having it in a calendar reminder, my phone reminds me to do it so I don't even have to think about it. Now, this won't totally eliminate this issue and you probably will still run into this problem occasionally, but it definitely does minimize it. And overall, with my Turo fleet, it is very rare for me not to be able to get a poor review made, especially one that was very obviously retaliatory. And it is very uncommon for a guest to leave me a negative review because of a reimbursement request. Next is support tickets. I know that I have a really hard time keeping track of all of the conversations that I'm having with Turo customer support. So so one of the best ways to stay on top of this is the Turo Support My Conversations tab. Truthfully, Turo doesn't even really do a good job letting hosts know that this exists. What you'll need to do is you'll need to go to Turo's website, click on your profile, then click on Contact Support, then it's going to take you to a new page. Click on your name on the top right hand corner, you may need to re-log in, then you're going to click My Conversations, and this is all of your open ticket. Your closed ones will be there as well. This is super helpful for me because I know that once I've read an email, I basically can never find it again. The next one may seem like a no-brainer for some, but I feel like once a month I have this conversation with people and the response is, oh, I've never actually thought about doing it that way. And that is to check in and clean your cars upon the return of the car, not upon the car being booked. What I mean is that if you have a reservation that's getting returned, don't wait until that car is booked out to clean and prep it for the next rental. This car could be smoked in, you could be busy, you could have personal plans, and not having the car prepped before the rental could create issues for that rental. It is much better to prep it ahead of time. That way, if it does get booked, you can accommodate even the most last minute rentals. Another tip is that if your guest is on an extended rental and you want the guest to be able to continue extending without someone else booking, you should snooze the car. Never, ever, ever cancel reservations. When you cancel a reservation, there is an auto review that comes up on your profile letting people know that you canceled, and this is very easy to avoid. Cancellations happen, but if you end up having to cancel a vehicle, make sure that you contact Turo and make them aware of the situation. There are a lot of instances where you can actually end up getting these negative marks that come onto your profile with a cancellation, as well as this auto review. You can actually avoid this just by communicating with Turo from the start. In these types of scenarios, you'll typically need to explain the situation to Turo, and then they will do a either no fault, guest cancellation, or Turo driven cancellation. And in these instances, you can get the cancellation process without hurting your profile. I have 5,000 trips on my profile, and I have never had to do a cancellation that hurt my own metrics. On a similar note is to contact Turo customers support often and about anything. Having an open line with Turo support is so important, whether it be to get that review removed, to get a reimbursement approved, whatever. For example, just this morning, I spent about 45 minutes on Turo customer support chat. And during that period of time, I successfully pushed through an ineligible incidental charge that was getting denied. I was pushing through a late return that for some reason wasn't getting processed, and I was dealing with a retaliatory review. And while some people watching this video may think, well, 45 minutes is actually a long time, it really wasn't, I was doing other work at the same time, and during this process, I was able to successfully get that review removed, and I was able to make $100 from the different charges that otherwise wouldn't have been approved. These are things that you absolutely must stay on top of as a Turo host, and it'll end up making you more money in the long run, but also create a healthy relationship with the Turo platform as well. Another great thing to keep in mind with any Turo fleet is that the snowball effect is very real with Turo. 
do not ever let your car sit for long periods of time. If your car isn't getting booked out, don't let it sit lower your price. Now, I recognize that not everybody wants to lower their price as low as possible to get their car booked out. For example, my 2018 Lincoln Navigator, the lowest that I'll price it is $90. If it doesn't get booked out at $90, then it just won't get booked out. But for the rest of my fleet, I will very literally price it the lowest that I have to in order to get it out of my lot. Because what I found with Turo over the years is that cars that sit sit for longer periods of time compared to cars that get booked out. For example, I may have a car that's on a week-long rental and I might have another car that's been sitting for three days. These cars could be very, very similar and the one that's sitting could even be cheaper. But in my experience, the car that's on that booking is going to get booked out before the car is sitting. And I believe that this has something to do with the Turo algorithm. And as a result of this, if you have a car that's been sitting for multiple days or weeks at a time, it is going to continue sitting until you do something about it. So lower your price as low as you need to in order to get that car out. And I'm willing to bet that if you do that, the next rental after that will be easier to come by. And I'm a firm believer that you should really lower your prices the minute that you see that they don't have any future bookings, even just by a couple of dollars. And last but not least, let's finish this with some rapid fire ones. Don't do unlimited mileage. Get used to instant bookings because Turo is going to be requiring it this year. Request for everything. I don't care if it's a $3 gas charge or a 50 cent toll charge request. Keep all communication within the Turo app. If a guest messages you outside the app, screenshot it and then upload it in the trip photos. If a guest gives you a call, answer it because it could be an emergency, but then make sure that they know that they should be messaging you for any non-emergency issues or questions. Make every automated message or really any guest communication that you have whether it's your description, your messages, whatever the case is, make it so easy to understand that a toddler can understand it. Because no matter how easy you make it, people will still get it wrong or they won't read it. If you have a set of common questions that you get, I typically like to have the answers to those questions pre-written out. You can either send these questions in a automated FAQ message that gets sent, or you could just keep them in the notes section of your phone and send them as they're asked. For example, we get a lot of questions about how to pair your phone to different Bluetooth. So we basically found video tutorials for every type of vehicle Bluetooth that we have have and then whenever we get the question we just send the video link or for some reason people oftentimes ask how to lock and unlock a Toyota Yaris and how to open the trunk so we have videos for those as well if you don't want to give a guest your number you can use a Google number those are free and last but not least read the Turo terms of service and if you can find it you can Google Turo terms of service and you'll be able to find it there but there you guys have it some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you operate your Turo business better like always you guys I hope that you enjoyed this video if you have any questions comments if you have anything to add I would love to hear it so make sure to leave a comment down below and while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.